Hey, P2P members and uh, Daily Mobility folks, we're back with our Daily Mobility series. And up close and personal today because we're going to deal with this area, the cervical spine, uh, really important for bringing blood flow to the brain and the brainstem. And having good mobility and competency here, good stability here is also really important um, just for the signals to go up the spinal cord, into the brainstem, into the rest of the brain, and then back out to the body. So having good movement competency and good health in this neck and cervical spine area is just really key. And so I'm excited to, to help with that today. Um, the first movement that we're going to work on is a lateral glide and it tends to be a challenging one. So um, it's the Egyptian, if you've ever seen somebody do kind of like the side to slide head glide. Um, and maybe in a dance video or, or something like that. So um, when I ask people to do this, some people are pretty decent at it. Some people are like, I don't know that I can move my neck at all in that, that way laterally. So what I want you to do is we're going to take your pointer fingers, put them up by the cheek, and just touch your cheek and then move the fingers out maybe a half inch or an inch away from the cheek. So if the fingers are out and forward, you should be able to see them a little bit in your peripheral vision. And then I want you to take your cheek with a lateral glide and we're sliding again through that cervical spine right to left, okay? So start small. You might need a mirror. Uh, seeing yourself on camera in this case or in a mirror is a great way to practice because that might help you get that lateral movement down a little bit more. So. The um, next one that we're going to move into is a full circle. So this combines what we worked on last time with the anterior posterior glide and then the lateral glide that we just did today. So I'm going to give you about a 45 degree angle here. We're going to glide the head to the side, to the front, to the other side, and then back around. Okay, so with shoulders stable and your chest bone or sternum facing in that same direction, we're gonna create a full circle, okay? So hopefully you could see that, that angle. Let me give you another angle. We'll do a few more together. So side, front, side, back, to chin tucked, head back, okay? Side, we can go the other way. Side, front, side, and then head back, okay? So if this feels chunky or awkward that's okay practice going slow at first and then gradually ramp up your speed um, having good control and good smooth motor competency throughout that circle is the first goal okay from there we're going to work on a lateral glide with a lateral tilt okay so this combines two movements ear to shoulder or lateral flexion with a lateral glide okay so we're going to tip the ear to the shoulder and then imagine that a string is pulling this ear up at a diagonal towards the ceiling and then we're coming back up to a nice tall neutral posture so tilt glide back up tall tilt ear to shoulder glide pull that other ear up towards the ceiling and then back up tall let's do another one tilt glide and then back up nice and tall you want to focus in all of these movements on lengthening so even if the head's in a tilt, we're then lengthening up at an angle, lengthening up crown of the head towards the ceiling at that angle. Or if we're in neutral, simply going up as tall as we can, crown of the head towards the clouds or towards the ceiling if you're inside. Um, the next one we're gonna move into is a sliding nod, and I have two variations of this one for you. This is amazing. So if you're somebody that has a lot of tension in the upper traps, behind the head, base of the skull area. This can be a really, uh, a, a winner, if you will. So we're gonna tuck the chin, and the first version of this, we're gonna tuck the chin and pull the head back, okay? So imagine that we have a magnet up and behind your head slightly, and that magnet is going to attract or pull your head up and back after you do your chin tuck. Once we have that retraction or sliding of the head back, chin tuck, pull the head back, stay there, and then we're gonna do some little knots. So chin to chest, just like you're saying, a miniature yes, okay? 
So chin tuck, head back, and then add in some nodding. All right, that should give you this nice kind of gentle stretch down the posterior part of the neck um, into the base of the skull. So go, go easy with it at first. Uh, it doesn't have to be max intensity, start slow, start small, and then graduate up from there. The second version of the sliding nod, also amazing, adds a little bit more movement and kind of flow into that movement. So we're gonna tuck the chin, pull the head back, drive the head forward, and then come up. So we're almost stacking the chin tuck and that head retraction with that anterior posterior glide and then back up into a little bit of a nod or like you're coming back to neutral. So from the front looks like this, chin tuck, head back, head forward, gliding back up. Remember to lengthen tall into that finished position. Really good. Chin tuck, head back, head forward, head up, and nice and tall. That's the sliding nod. And then the last one for a cervical spine, um, this one we want to be careful with that we're not going into too much extension or not tipping the head back. But we can achieve it without much extension. It's a figure eight pattern. So we're going to do this uh, like infinity sign or horizontal figure eight where the eight is tipped on the side. Okay, imagine your nose has magic marker on it. And then we're going to create kind of like this bendy figure eight, remembering to lengthen and maybe gradually increasing your range of motion as you become comfortable with that, okay? So emphasizing the chin tuck instead of chin up, okay? So we don't need a ton of extension. We can still achieve that with emphasizing more of the tuck in the chin, okay? That is your daily mobility series for the cervical spine. Um, remember to test retest. So really good ones with the cervical spine to test retest could be uh, like a shoulder range of motion. So internal external range of motion coming up into abduction, flexion, any of those, and then comparing side to side, work on the sticky side and see what improvements you can get out of working uh, in your cervical spine. Another good assess reassess could be vision. So if you're looking at something that's tough to read you start out and then you do your figure eights or you do your sliding nods um, retest and see what your visual acuity is like after doing some of those cervical movements when we bring more blood flow to the brain stem and the visual system sometimes you'll notice some improvements there as well thanks and i'll see you in the next video